just as your daddy. Stop being a bitch and give me a call back. Love you. Good morning, YouTube. Saturday, 6 a.m. I got called out for a uh, rack liquid level alarm. This is gonna be on rack A, so. That old glory right there. Woohoo! Um, <clears throat> so it doesn't say if it's a low liquid level or a high liquid level alarm. Um, it just says liquid level alarm, so. Uh, it is about 45 degrees this morning, so. I was just getting comfortable with racks. You know, I've only been doing rack systems for about six months now. I'm just getting comfortable with them in the summertime and sure enough, cold weather hits and we start getting all these new types of uh, problems and symptoms and all sorts of different valves opening and closing and shit. So I'm, uh, I'm headed over there. We'll see what we find, see if I can make a little video about this, but uh, through the process of this video, gents, ladies and gents, uh, just remember that I am a rookie in the rack world. Uh, we'll see. Um, we'll see if I can't mess it up too bad. Uh, for all you senior techs out there that know exactly what you're doing, uh, do me a favor, leave me a comment. Let me see what I could have done better, or what what I should have checked first, or whatever the case is. But all right, we'll see you out there. during the day another two over here and then most everything is at night from like 11 midnight there's a couple cases going into defrost back to back uh, whenever this guy energizes that's my DDR valve or OLDR valve it's holding back the pressure which in essentially stacks the refrigerant into the receiver. Right now we got about 50%. So what I've been trying to do is I've been trying to find my DDR valve or OLDR valve here on the E2, but I'm not that uh, experienced yet, so I'm still looking. So I'll get back with you guys. Let me try to find this. All right, guys, I finally found it. So that's my point. That's my board and that's my point for the OLDR valve. And then this is my uh, other plot for the graph. We're gonna do the liquid level control. So we're gonna graph it. Yeah. And then look at that right there. So the pink is my uh, liquid level. The green is going to be my OLDR valve. Now look at that. 
I don't think you could get any clearer than that. The valve is energized. Liquid level goes up. Valve is de-energized. Liquid level goes down. See that? Right here too. And right here too. See, that's my liquid level right there. When it's not energized, that's my liquid level. See that? So let's look at last night. Right here, see? It's not energized. Here, during the day, it's not energized, my liquid level's fine. Once my uh, OLDR valve energizes, my liquid level goes up. Right here. Pretty much when that valve, so when that valve energizes, it holds back some refrigerant, so the, uh, so the, so when the cool gas goes to the cases and comes back as liquid, it can go back into the liquid line. If that makes any sense. That's my split condenser pump out. So right now we're only using half of the receiver. See right here? Oh, sorry guys. This condenser runs full time. This condenser runs half. So this, this side of the condenser shut off and we're pumping out everything inside this condenser back into the suction line right here right here right here so we're pumping out half of the receiver i mean i'm sorry half of the condenser back into the suction and you can see that valve's energized right here sit down so the cold weather is doing some things there you go. So the cold weather's got me messed up, man. Not only am I just getting used to Rex, but here I am trying to figure shit out that I've never done before. What I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna override that valve to on, just so I can check the differential across it. Now you want to do this and make sure that no case is going to defrost. So right now, as you can see, our incoming pressure is about 145. And look at this. See, now the valve is holding back. It was up here a minute ago. So now it's holding back 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 PSI. From what I've been told, that's about the setting you want, about 25 PSI. Here's some fun stuff, gents. Some fun stuff. I found something else, though. This is my uh, receiver repressurization valve. So pretty much the headmaster, and so pretty much it sends hot gas to raise the pressure in the receiver, and this was closed. So that's another issue. The uh, the receiver cool gas. So yeah, so the receiver cool gas uh, was too cold. So pretty much uh, from your drop leg, uh, we got 60 degree liquid coming in and you're trying to, trying to defrost some cases with 60 degree liquid, um, or I'm sorry, 60 degrees here, 60 degree saturated vapor. Uh, by the time you go to the cases, you're really not going to raise the temperature much. So this is another reason why the um, OLDR valve was holding back. For a longer period of time because the um, the cases were trying to defrost um, to a termination set point of 65 degrees so let me show you real quick Enter. see our walk-in freezer and if you go to defrost right there right there so it's going to try to defrost until it, the termination temperature reaches 65. But if you are, if you have 60 degree or colder saturated vapor going out to the cases and it's turning into a liquid, you're really never going to reach this temperature. 
not with a hot gas, uh, not with a, a repressurization valve closed. So that's another issue. So we found a, uh, a few issues here. I, I know a lot of these things, a lot of these little things, I just, I have trouble putting them together right now because, I mean, this, this is not typical residential system. I'm going to throw a couple of cases in the defrost and see how it acts up now. So give me a few minutes, I'll get back to y'all. If I just chose any case, we're going to go with a walk-in freezer pumping down right now. So we're going to look at the uh, termination temp right there. We're gonna see if it gets all the way up to 65 degrees. And we're gonna see how long it takes and see what happens to our receiver. So the receiver, about 55, 58%. So we'll give it a few minutes, guys. We've been in defrost for just a few minutes now. Termination is at 62. I think termination for this one, 65. Uh, 65 degrees right there. So we're just gonna monitor this. Let's see what it's doing over here. Look at that. So there we go. That's our problem right there. No bueno. No bueno. So this is what we're doing now. Pretty much what I did was our set point was 177. So now we're gonna raise that up to 190 on the discharge. So pretty much what that's gonna do is we're gonna start cycling off uh, fans. So we get to about 190 psi. We're gonna raise our discharge with we internship, raise our drop leg, raise our temperature. So the cool gas going to the cases is warmer and we can defrost cases faster and possibly not fill up as fast. So that's what we're doing right now, gentlemen. I've been on the phone with my supervisor and the top tech and all that good stuff. And uh, that's where we're at. So as you can see, we're shutting fans off now. We're trying to get this pressure up to 190. Once we do, I'm gonna give it a couple minutes and then we're gonna throw another case in the defrost and then we'll see how our receiver acts. This rack stuff's no joke. Okay, so we got A07 and defrost. This is our defrost termination temperature right here. This is set for 65 degrees as well. And it's our current receiver level, about 70. We're gonna give it a couple more minutes. We're gonna see what the receiver does when we're closer to 60, for, uh, 60 degrees. All right guys, we're getting close to about 60 degrees. It's only been in defrost for a very short amount of time, very few minutes. And so our liquid level is not rising as much. Before I changed the discharge setting, that would have been at 100% already. So we're not getting up to 100%. That's a lot better. All right, let's give it a few more minutes. Let's see what happens to this. All right, guys. It appears that we have we have this under control now. So, if you look at, we're gonna try one more case. Uh, this is case A06, and our uh, oh, where are you? Termination set point is 60 degrees. So we're gonna set this one into defrost. Start defrost. So it's gonna start pumping down. Meanwhile, we're gonna go to the other page and monitor the temperature. And we're gonna monitor that uh, receiver level. All right, so we're gonna monitor that uh, defrost termination. And we're gonna monitor this receiver level. That's 
at about 58%. We're gonna give this a couple minutes until it terminates. And we'll see what that receiver level is. As long as we don't go up to 100, we'll be all right. All right, Tess, as you can see, we're still on AO6. Termination is 57. And we're still only reading about 70% liquid level, so that's a lot better. This thing terminates at 60, so we're gonna monitor this for a few more minutes. As long as we're, we, we uh, terminate on temperature and we don't go to 100, we're going to call it a day. And I already spoke to my supervisor. He'll be out here with me on uh, Tuesday. So we should be all right. All right, guys. So we're still in defrost here. 59 degrees. And we're still only at about 70% liquid. So we're good. There it is, 60 degrees right now. So this thing should terminate here any minute now. And our liquid level is good, so we are good for today. Uh, I'll see if I can get some video here when we come back on Tuesday, but for now, that'll be all, gents. Like I said, I'm not a professional. I am a rookie in the rack world. So I appreciate everybody watching. I apologize for the loud noises here inside the rec room. Thank you all for watching guys. We'll see you on the next call.